Welcome to this week's edition of Dojo TV. Today we're going to talk about detailing and threading, a couple of concepts that I'd like to look at in detail. Today I want to talk about threading, which is this concept uh, basically to add some detail and some effects to your mix. And the way you want to go about doing this is creating long stretches of sound, basically long fabric pieces, long threads of sound that are constantly in existence in your track. And then we're going to weave them in and out of the perceptual range, weave them into and out of our track using auto fillers and auto filters and effects. So we're going to build some racks today and we're going to build some threads and talk about how I use this to create breakdowns, transitions, intros, and a variety of other features that are going to spice up your track and lend a sense of narrative to your track so that it's not just huge, powerful dick in the ear bases the entire time. Being able to pull back on the gas is sometimes exactly what you need to make it super impactful when we go full speed. So let's hop over to Ableton. And I uh, I found this, this track a few days ago that I had put away in 2019. So I'm excited to do some work on it. It is uh, definitely a WIP, so please be forgiving. Uh, and also, it's kind of a silly track, so don't be afraid to talk some mad shoots about it. So I'm going to just play... Uh, a moment of this song. Let's go straight to the bass drop because that's what we all care about, right? Or actually, we'll do drop B with the lead, and then we're going to create some threads and how we can uh, show you how you can do this. So let me know what you think. If you never So you get the point. Uh, it's a new disco kind of track, and I haven't run this through the Skrillex busing template or done any real mixing or anything. It's still not quite there. So before we do that, I want to do some threading. Now, one of my favorite things to thread ever is basically just a long instance of vinyl noise. Where can you get some vinyl? Ableton comes with a really fantastic vinyl sampler that is cool because it's constantly generating new bits of vinyl. So if you resample this, you're never going to have the same two vinyl clicks happen in a row, which is quite nice. So it's great for layering up on kicks or on snares for a little bit of that sampled variety and flavor flav. That is residing inside of your audio effects over here. And I'm just going to throw this onto my MIDI channel. Uh, and now, if I turn on the volume, we have Final Crackle. So you never... leaving this on is a really great way to uh, have a bit of noise throughout the entire time, and that is not that great. So we don't want this volume to always be on. You can automate that on and off, so that way you have it or don't. But I find it even more useful to just resample a little chunk of this, and this will be our very first thread. And I'm going to look at some ways of making this thread kind of bop and sing and move along. And then we're going to go deep with this concept. I just want to make the concept extraordinarily clear. So let's go ahead and resample some of the vinyl vinyl and I will go ahead and turn this on. We do have different flavors of vinyl as well. You have the density, you have hard, soft, etc, etc. Now I'm just going to let this be default, so let's go ahead and record. It's calming like a fireplace, isn't it? It's like this nice, delicious crackle that I just adore. So we have our first thread here, and now the way to make this thread really work is to consolidate a section of it and turn on loops. That way we can extend this throughout the entire duration of our uh, of our temporal field of our song here. So now we have this happening the entire time. Admittedly, I'm not gonna want this to happen the entire time. I might want it only in our breakdown. So say we're starting in our breakdown, let's listen to it in the context of the song and see if it's too loud or too soft. 
pretty loud, so let's go ahead and pull this back, maybe six decibels or so. And now to add some extra kind of movement to this, say we want this to kind of throb or move in time with the beat, one of my favorite things to do is actually to automate a utility, so that way the utility is playing our volume gain. Picture this like your keyboardist's fingers hitting the pads of the keys. So we can do one of two shapes at any given time, and sometimes we want to do a variety of them. So what those two shapes are, uh, <laughs> this is not going to seem that profound once I state it, but one of the two shapes is a pluck and the other shape is a suck. Whoa! So you can have sucky or plucky music. So this is our typical kind of plucky sound and that will give us like a much more kind of percussive sort of tempo or we can go in the opposite direction and create a sucky kind of sound. So for this particular thing I'm using an eighth note grid. Perhaps you want an eighth note kind of side chainy vinyl throb which will give us this. It might be a bit fast for this section of the song, so instead of doing a pluck or a suck, let's do something, let's do a suck that we've dialed in a little bit more carefully at a quarter note count, so this is going to have like that kind of house kick kind of feel as it throbs up and down. So let's check that out. Cool. So this is a great way to create a little bit of ambience. And now if you also want to uh, delay this, you'll have those echoes going out side to side, which will make for a more interesting kind of... Uh, sound as a whole and it'll help it take up more space. So let's go ahead and turn all the way up on our filter and pull this down to like a note instead of that dotted signature and now we can try this. So now you have a little bit of a there's almost like a rhythmic component to this so it's like a great way of doing sort of rhythmic uh, atmospheres. So let's just copy this out and we'll say that this is thread one. Now we don't want this playing the entire time of the song so I'm gonna go through and mute the parts that I don't want it. Now I'm gonna mute all of this and I'm gonna mute it in the drop and let's probably mute it here as well. Now Sure, we could have just copied this clip around, but that's not what today's about. Today is about threading this stuff in, and to do that, you first have to have these threads. So the vinyl thread is one of my favorites, but another one that I really like to do are pitch risers and downers, and then white noise, uppers and downers, in multiple kinds of ways. So I'm going to look at some of those with you. And the first one is going to be just basic level one. You usually end up putting the details first. You end up ignoring the big picture, getting stuck in a loop, and eventually you say, this doesn't sound like my hero. You give up and you start over. This happens all the time. If it's happening to you, don't worry about it. It's You're not bad if this is happening to you. This is a normal part of making music. Every producer has to go through this stage. Understanding how these three forces, mixing, composition, and sound design come together is absolutely vital to making your music sound loud and clear and well mixed. But if you don't know why, it's a mind-boggling sea of details. So if you want to know why to do what when you're composing the mix, you should check out my course, Composing the Mix. First one is going to be just basic level one white noise. Super, super, it's super, super useful instrument. You have to think for a second that what it is that we are doing as sound engineers, as producers, is we are playing with the entire palette of the sonic uh, of the sonic realm. And so what that means is sometimes we're going to use silence as an instrument intentionally to lend focus to something else. But similarly, we're going to also use white noise, which is absolute sonic chaos. <laughs> all the frequencies at one time. And you can use white noise intentionally to play like a hat. Or you could make it be a snare layer so that that snare has some extra brightness. So a song is not ever going to be consisted of entirely white noise, nor is a song ever going to consist of entire silence. But these are just other tools in this sonic palette that we should be familiar with. So using white noise, uh, we all know it is the white noise riser and the downer. Very useful. So let's just take a look at some great ways to, to kind of command that as an instrument. So let's call this homemade vinyl and now move on to our next thread. And I'm going to go ahead and even group this and call this a thread group because we're going to do our building in here. So the next one's going to be a MIDI channel, and I'm going to actually create a white noise riser using Operator. I'm a big fan of the Operator sound simply because you can make it stereo and wide. So let's just pick a note, doesn't matter, because it's going to be white noise. So let's check that out. Very cool. It's a sine wave. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn on white noise, and now I'm going to pull this down so I don't harm anyone's eardrum. 
Okay, very bright. The great thing about the operator one is you can put the spread on it, which is cool. And now we have this long instance of white noise happening. So how can we make this work for us? How can we thread this into our paradigm? Well, first, we're going to want to soften the white noise because being a really bright, really harsh kind of sound, it's going to take too much attention and it's going to occupy too much of the stereo realm, or excuse me, too much of the, the, the frequency, the frequency uh, spectrum. So let's go ahead and kind of soften it. And whenever you're doing effects, you want your effects to be kind of smeared and to be softer and to also be kind of like wide and ambient so that they're filling in the spaces between your drum transients. We want them to be a little bit washed out. They don't have to be really high fidelity and dry and cutting down the middle. So anytime you want to smear something, reach for reverb and reach for phaser. They're really fantastic for that particular thing. Uh, I'm also going to start to make this uh, into a audio effect rack. And the reason for that is because when you start getting into the habit of using audio effect racks and you start restricting your extremes and dialing in the extremes of the audio effect racks macros, you're going to get a way more playable instrument. So that's going to be the very first thing that we do. Let's also throw on some echo because that's just the coolest plugin ever. I really encourage you to watch the weekly download deep dive on echo and learn this thing inside and out because it's a fantastic instrument. One of the best things about Ableton 10 besides groups within groups. Uh, so very cool. And now what else would we want? All right, cool. That'll be fine. Okay, so the main instrument to weave this thread in and out of existence is going to be our auto filter. So let's go ahead. And if I just play this, we have, uh, we can let in the highs. Cool. Oh, it's okay. So it's kind of like uh, a white noise riser, but a much better way and a much better setting to get more out of this instrument is actually the band pass filler with a little bit of resonance. Let's even turn on this analog emulated uh, setting. Maybe give it a little bit of drive because this way we can sweep through the entire thing and just kind of pick the frequency of this white noise, which is all the frequencies happening in a flat response, pick where we want this to sit. So now we have this kind of motion. And with the delay and echo and phaser, it's, it's quite pleasant sounding. So let's go ahead and start to find some places where we can thread this in. Now this would be, uh, let's first make it a thread and to make it a thread, we want it to be continuously occupying our entire duration. So let's have this run all the way through our entire song. It's always going to be happening there. And now we're going to want this to be out of the way. So let's go ahead and group this to macro one and keep this stuff completely down. So it's happening, but we can't perceive it's happening. So it's like it's not happening. So whenever we want to bring this into our song, we're just going to play the frequency and we're going to suck it up or suck it down. Super cool. So let's go ahead and find a place that we can do that probably here at the breakdown. So let's listen. Let's even turn off the effect. So that's the kind of effect that we're going for. So let's go ahead and suck up into that moment. And we'll sweep up and then we can sweep back down. But lo and behold, 26 hertz is really, really low and 19,000 hertz is really high. So let's restrict these extremes using the macro mapping mode so that way we can make this a more playable instrument. So some ranges that I find really useful for white noise are 150 for the lows and about 12,500 for the highs, which is uh, a point that it goes right up to the highs and then it disappears in a really pleasing way. So it'll go like, it like very delicately kind of withers away. It's kind of nice. So let's try that. Let's listen to that. Whoa. Whoa, that's extreme. Sweet. So we've got something working for us. And now let's say we want this at the bass drop. Okay, cool. I can weave this up over here and have that drop that way. Uh, perhaps we would want this to happen uh, just a little bit at each of these kind of intermediary moments to add some to add some movement there. Maybe we have another one right here. So you can see that once you have your thread set up, all you have to do is kind of play the automation to get the most out of it. So we'll pick that for now. So in the context of the song, because if you're doing something and it sucks in the context of the song, just avoid it altogether. But let's just check it in the context of the song. If you never leave, Chill. Basic spell level one, the white noise spell. <clears throat> now in the dojo, we're always encouraging you guys to try and stretch for the stars. Find something unique. Find something that is you. Try and make your sound your sound. So to do this, uh, try and be a little bit more than just basic. Now, white noise is a very basic sound. So whenever you're stretching for the stars, some things that you can do to make your white noise sounds a little bit more interesting is you can try putting corpus on it or resonators on it and actually tune your white noise to the key of your song. So I'm going to load up a resonator in here and uh, let's go ahead and map this 50-50 to number two. So we don't want this to be all the way resonated because that's going to give us a sound more like this, quite resonant. 
I mean, that's kind of cool if that's what you're going for, but let's go ahead and just have it so we can decorate this white noise with the resonance. So I'm going to set our max value to 50. And now let's also tune this to the key of my song. So I know that the key of my song is an F sharp minor because I'm a good little student and I put that up at the top of my song so I don't get confused halfway through it. Trust me, that happens all the time. So let's set this to uh, an F minor chord. So that would be uh, an F and then over here we would want to do the, the perfect seventh or excuse me, the perfect fifth, which is the seventh step up. So that's kind of like a halfway between a major and a minor chord. And then we can either do one of the minor intervals like three or six or something like that. So let's just go ahead and pick three and check that out. And now our chord or our white noise should have our chord in it and we can dial that in or out. So maybe it sucks up as just pure white noise, but when it comes cascading down, we have it transform into this cool chordal sound. So let's try that. Oh, I guess we need to have that all the way wet. Come on. So now it's a slightly more interesting version of white noise. Easy to do. Now, another thing that I really like to do with white noise risers and downers is have an ability to gate them and have them have like a kind of rhythmic flutter. So using an auto pan, we can turn this into a rhythmic percussive staccato sound. So let's go ahead and map the amount to number three. And I'm going to, uh, let's go ahead and turn that on for now. Let's close on all this, close down all the stuff so that we can actually see our macros. Go away, resonator. Make sure you tune that resonator to the key of your song. And let's turn up our amount set our phase to uh, be perfectly in phase with one another and we'll set our shape like this. Now when I go to this rate mode, let's map rate to number four so we can have a kind of flutter that is staccato-y. Super tasteful and this gets really tasteful when you're actually blending in the amount. So maybe it starts super staccato-y and that recedes halfway through the device. So that way it's like start staccato and then it becomes nice and smooth. Cool. So you're getting more movement out of this, and that's the key. Movement is interesting. So anytime you can incorporate extra movement to a pad sound or a flutter sound through staccatos or through rhythmic changes, you're going to make for a more interesting listening experience.